Warning, Will Robinson. That iconic line from a popular 1960s sitcom served as the universal alert whenever danger approached. The cast of Lost in Space contributed many memorable jokes and timeless references that have endured through the decades. But what happened to the actors behind these beloved characters? Lost in Space premiered during a period when Americans were captivated by the possibilities of space exploration. With the space race in full swing, people dared to imagine a future where interstellar travel and robotic companions were commonplace. As the show unfolded, it also marked a significant milestone in television history by transitioning from black and white to color. Join us as we catch up with the talented cast members who helped shape this groundbreaking series. So, without further ado, let's dive into the journey of the Lost in Space cast in this video. Marta Kristen as Judy Robinson. As the eldest daughter, Judith Robinson had many aspirations for her future. However, when her family found themselves on an unexpected journey through space, she initially struggled to adjust. Despite her dreams of becoming an actress, the celestial voyage forced her to put those aspirations on hold. Thankfully, Major Don West provided some much-needed support, helping to ease the transition. Similarly, actress Marta Kristen underwent significant changes of her own. Her journey began as an orphan in war-torn Europe, eventually leading her to stardom on television. Reflecting on her past, Kristen shared, I hailed from Norway and was adopted at the age of five. My adoptive parents, both teachers, would drive me to the studio at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. I'd think to myself, here I am, an orphan now in show business, heading to the set at 20th Century Fox. I can't believe my luck. Being treated so well was like a dream come true. It was surreal, considering I'd always dreamed of acting. My mother said that when I got off the plane from Norway, I walked like Charlie Chaplin. She initially gained attention as Lorelei in Frankie Avalon's Beach Blanket Bingo. Following her time on Lost in Space, she prioritized filming commercials due to motherhood, accumulating a total of 40 commercials. However, she continues to pursue other projects, with her most recent appearances in 2019, featuring in two episodes of The Vamps Next Door. Now 79 years old, she resides in California with her two rescue dogs. June Lockhart as Maureen Robinson When the Robinson family finds themselves adrift in space, each episode unfolds into a series of thrilling escapades. Their entire world is flipped upside down. Luckily, they have a pillar of strength, empathy, and logic in the form of Dr. Maureen Robinson. Alongside her distinguished background in biochemistry, she has also mastered the arts of cooking and gardening. The family is fortunate to have her by their side throughout their adventures. Similarly, the Lost in Space cast welcomed a highly esteemed actress into their midst. Prior to joining the Jupiter 2 crew, June Lockhart had already garnered a Tony Award and received two Emmy nominations. Born in 1925, she made a notable breakthrough with a starring role in the 1946 film She-Wolf of London. However, one of her most iconic portrayals was as yet another beloved matriarch, Ruth Martin, Timmy's mother, in the 1950s coming-of-age series, Lassie. Her career continued to flourish with roles in Petticoat Junction, Grey's Anatomy, Roseanne, and more. Indeed, after venturing among the stars, June Lockhart became a star herself, inspiring others to reach for the cosmos. Dr. Maureen Robinson served as a source of inspiration for real-life astronauts. Her influence is so profound that she has been named an honorary member of NASA. Additionally, she holds an ongoing invitation to the White House for press briefings. Honoring her contributions, she has been awarded not one, but two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Celebrating her 98th birthday on June 25, 2023, she remains active and radiant to this day. Guy Williams as Dr. John Robinson. 
Professor John Robinson possessed a wide array of skills, from astrophysics to planetary geology and even mastery of a jetpack. However, amidst the chaos caused by the eccentric Dr. Smith, the patriarch of the Robinson family often found himself somewhat overshadowed. Nevertheless, Guy Williams' portrayal of Professor Robinson played a crucial leadership role within the ensemble cast of Lost in Space. Before trading his spacesuit for a silver one, Guy Williams was renowned for his portrayal of the masked vigilante Zorro, complete with a black cape and saber. This iconic role garnered Williams' widespread adoration from various demographics, each with their own reasons and sometimes overlapping ones. However, his career faced a setback when he joined the cast of Bonanza. Pernell Roberts departed the show in protest of his character's treatment, leading to Williams's inclusion as one of the four Cartwright leading men. Unfortunately, contractual obligations and internal competition resulted in his brief tenure on the show. Nevertheless, Williams swiftly rebounded by joining the cast of Lost in Space, where his charismatic presence as the leading man garnered him a new legion of fans, many of whom remembered him fondly from his days as Zorro. His portrayal of the vigilante had earned him international acclaim, so much so that his visit to Argentina following his stint on the sci-fi series was met with immense admiration. Buenos Aires even became a second home for him, and Williams returned to the United States only to participate in themed episodes of Family Feud, pitting himself against residents of Batman's Gotham and Gilligan's Island. Williams enjoyed his fame until his retirement, but tragically passed away in 1989 at the age of 65 from a brain aneurysm. Mark Goddard as Major Don West. Every spacecraft needs a leader, and in the case of a space voyage, Major Don West took on that role. Well, kind of. His primary duty was to ensure the Robinson family stayed on course in space, but as viewers know all too well, things didn't always go according to plan. Nonetheless, he did his best to make Judy Robinson's journey a little more bearable. Similarly to his character, Mark Goddard faced his fair share of challenges, but also experienced triumphs throughout his career. One notable success was his role as deputy to the main character in Spelling's inaugural series, Johnny Ringo. Additionally, his portrayal of Sergeant Chris Ballard in the crime drama The Detectives remains one of his most significant roles to date. Following the disbandment of the Lost in Space cast, Goddard's career slowed down somewhat. However, he had a poignant moment with a heartfelt episode of Chips. Apart from this, his professional life remained relatively quiet until he made a cameo appearance in the 1998 Lost in Space film. Outside of acting, he pursued a degree in education and began teaching special education acting courses. Goddard's relationship with Lost in Space was multifaceted and nuanced. Initially, he wasn't fond of the campy nature of the show, a sentiment shared by actors like Robert Reed regarding the Brady Bunch. However, he grew to appreciate the impact the show had on its audience and reflected on his time there in his 2009 memoir, To Space and Back. He remarked, It transports you back to a time in your life that was positive for most people. And for some, not so much. But they have lost in space to escape to. Sadly, he passed away from pulmonary fibrosis on October 10, 2023, at the age of 87. Jonathan Harris as Dr. Zachary Smith. The plot of Lost in Space wouldn't have unfolded as it did without the inclusion of the deceitful Dr. Zachary Smith. Right from the beginning, his conniving ways set the Robinson family on a tumultuous journey through space, continuously causing them trouble. While he often engaged in verbal sparring matches with the robot, it was clear that if anyone deserved the title of a traitorous transistorized toad, it was him. Portraying the character of Dr. Smith was Jonathan Harris, who thoroughly enjoyed his role on board the Jupiter II. His dedication paid off. 
earning him the distinction of being one of the first actors to receive special guest star billing. Despite this, Harris harbored concerns that viewers might grow weary of his character. To combat this, he tirelessly brainstormed new ways to keep Dr. Smith captivating, often working late into the night. His impeccable comedic timing led to many of his best lines being improvised on the spot. Even prior to joining the Lost in Space cast, Harris had portrayed a cowardly character in The Third Man. In the 1970s, audiences saw him as a reluctant host on Uncle Croc's block. Eventually, he made the transition from live action to voice work, entertaining a new generation of viewers. For those who missed him on Uncle Croc's block, they may have recognized him as Manny the Praying Mantis in Pixar's A Bug's Life, where he even slipped in a nod to Lost in Space with his iconic line, Oh, the pain. Although he passed away at the age of 87 in 2002, his portrayal of the nefarious doctor will always be remembered. Angela Cartwright as Penny Robinson. Has anyone spotted Penny? What about that strange creature? Numerous younger viewers could connect with Penny Robinson, whose imagination soared as high as the stars, matched only by her compassion for animals. That's probably why she didn't hesitate to care for an extraterrestrial chimpanzee that communicated through blooping sounds. She portrayed Teresa Mazzetti in Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, 1979, under the direction of Lost in Space producer Irwin Allen. Cartwright made a brief appearance as reporter number two in the 1998 Lost in Space film and as Dr. Smith's mother in the third episode of the second season of the 2018 Netflix reimagined Lost in Space series. Young Angela Cartwright began her journey through The Danny Thomas Show, but 1965 marked a significant year in her career. She secured the role of Brigitta in The Sound of Music before joining the Lost in Space cast. Following the conclusion of the series, Cartwright remained dedicated to this iconic franchise across all its iterations. In the film adaptation, she appeared briefly as a reporter and even portrayed the mother of the nefarious Dr. Smith in Netflix's reimagined series. Nowadays, she focuses on photography behind the lens, showcasing her work on her own website. Sheila Allen as Aunt Gamma. Sheila Allen portrayed Aunt Gamma in the series. Since the 1950s, Allen graced the stage with performances in works by Shakespeare. Her inaugural leading role was as Catherine the Shrew in The Taming of the Shrew for the Arena Company in Birmingham, 1954-56. Among her numerous Shakespearean portrayals, she took on the characters of Hippolyta in A Midsummer Night's Dream with the Bristol Old Vic Company, a production that transferred to London, 1957-58, and Portia in The Merchant of Venice, at the Old Vic in London, 1962. Allen made guest appearances alongside Patrick McGuhan in episodes of Danger Man, Don't Nail Him Yet, 1964, and The Prisoner, A, B, and C, 1967. In her appearance on The Prisoner, Allen portrayed Number 14, a scientist among many who attempted unsuccessfully in The Village to extract from Number 6, McGuhan, the reason for his resignation from a certain organization. In the television series Bouquet of Barbed Wire, 1976, adapted from a novel by Andrea Newman and described by Philip Purser as a provocative saga that sparked much conversation, well-crafted and performed, Allen's character was the spouse of Peter Manson, Frank Finlay, who harbored an unhealthy fixation on his married daughter, Prue, Susan Penhaligon. Allen passed away in London on October 13, 2011, at the age of 78. D. Hartford as Verda D. Hartford portrayed the android Verda in the 1966 Lost in Space episode The Android Machine and its follow-up Revolt of the Androids. Additionally, she featured in a third Lost in Space episode as Nancy Pie Squared in the Space Beauty installment which centered around an intergalactic beauty competition. Her first appearance on screen was in A Girl in Every Port, 
1952, under the direction of Chester Erskine. Between 1964 and 1965, she made guest appearances on Perry Mason, assuming the roles of Leslie Ross in The Case of the Accosted Accountant, Lois Gray in The Case of the Missing Button, and Rhonda Coleridge in The Case of the Baffling Bug. Hartford exchanged vows with Howard Hawks on February 20th, 1953, at his residence in Hollywood, California. However, they parted ways in 1959. In 1972, she entered matrimony with Stuart Kramer III. She was affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly known as the Mormons, Harry Monty as Giyu. Harry Monty portrayed Giyu in the series. Monty kicked off his career in vaudeville and appeared in various films spanning from the 1930s to the 1970s, often without receiving credit. He featured in Wizard of Oz in 1939 as a munchkin and also took on the role of one of the winged monkeys. He later expressed that he viewed his portrayal as a munchkin to be the most significant among all his stage and film roles throughout his five-decade-long career. His filmography included appearances in movies such as Hell's a Poppin', The Court Jester, Planet of the Apes, Papillon, a rendition of Swiss Family Robinson, Three Ring Circus, Hello Dolly, and serving as a rotoscope reference actor in the 1978 animated film The Lord of the Rings. Monty served as a stunt double for numerous child actors and executed all of Margaret O'Brien's stunt sequences. Furthermore, he worked as a stunt person in films like Tarzan Finds a Son, Bad Bascom, River of No Return, and Earthquake. Monty passed away on December 28, 1999, at the age of 95. Following a private funeral ceremony, he was laid to rest at Sheareth Israel Memorial Park in Dallas. Albert Salmi as Alonzo P. Tucker. Albert Salmi made two appearances as the mischievous pirate Alonzo P. Tucker on Lost in Space. In 1955, Salmi took on the role of Bo Decker in the stage production Bus Stop on Broadway, also participating in the play's national tour. His portrayal garnered acclaim from critics, leading to Salmi being offered the opportunity to reprise the character in the film adaptation Bus Stop. 1956, alongside Marilyn Monroe. Despite his frequent appearances on screen, Salmi shared the sentiment of many actor studio graduates that roles in movies and television were inferior compared to stage performances. One of his earliest television roles was in the live televised rendition of the novel Bang the Drum Slowly, 1956 showcased on the anthology series The United States Steel Hour, alongside Paul Newman and George Peppert. Salmi crossed paths with actress Peggy Ann Garner during their involvement in the national touring production of Bus Stop in 1955. They exchanged vows on May 18, 1956, in New York City. Their sole daughter, Catherine Ann, Cass Salmi, entered the world on March 30, 1957. Sadly, Catherine passed away in 1995 from heart disease at the age of 38. On April 23, 1990, Albert Salmi and his estranged spouse Roberta were discovered deceased in their Spokane residence by a friend who visited to check on her. According to reports from newspapers, Salmi fatally shot Roberta in the kitchen of their home before taking his own life in an upstairs room, Bill Moomy as Will Robinson. Tech whiz Will Robinson often found himself in perilous situations, but thankfully, he could rely on the robot to sound the familiar alarm and assist him. With his own quick thinking, the youngest Robinson always managed to navigate out of trouble. Like his character, Bill Moomy had grand aspirations, once declaring, From a young age, I felt a strong desire to appear on television. And indeed, television is where he found himself and where he wished to remain, as it allowed him to portray someone he admired. Mumi's acting journey began at the tender age of three. Among his Disney ventures, Sammy, the way out seal, remains a cherished favorite. Rumor has it that Mumi was considered for the role of Eddie Munster on The Munsters, but his parents objected to the extensive makeup requirements, so he portrayed a friend of Eddie's instead. 
Following a successful stint on Babylon 5, Mumi, now 69, transitioned into narrating for various networks, including Animal Planet, A&E, the Sci-Fi Channel, and E. Throughout, he fondly regarded Lost in Space as flawless, which led him to co-author a book with Angela Cartwright titled Lost and Found in Space. However, his fascination with space persisted, leading to appearances in Space Command. Reflecting on Lost in Space, he remarked, The combination of kids and robots in space provides endless opportunities for imagination. Over the three years, we explored various styles, from the ensemble dynamic in black and white to the whimsical, almost slapstick humor of the second season with Smith, Robot, and Will. Then in the third season, we found a balance between the two, with some characters playing it straight, while others, like Jonathan, maintained a comedic approach. It resonated on multiple levels, and I can confidently say it was always a joy to be on set. The enduring fan base is just the icing on the cake. Recall this fantastic series? Which character did you adore the most? Drop your thoughts below. We go through each one and eagerly await your input. Thanks for watching and goodbye.